Welcome to Respiratory HQ. I'm Tanya Peel, and today we are going to talk about the volumes and capacity box. So if you are a first year student and you haven't reached this yet in your curriculum, don't worry, it's coming. If you're a second year student, you probably saw this and just cringed because this is a little bit confusing. And a lot of times what we do is just memorize it and then hope it goes away, but it always comes back when you get to PFTs in your curriculum. So I'm gonna be honest, when I was in school, I memorized it also. Um, when I started teaching though, I had to figure it out. And for me, the best way to figure it out was what I call breathing the box. So we're going to breathe the box and hopefully in breathing the box, you'll start really understanding the divisions of the volumes and the capacities. Okay. So let's just start with this whole breathing thing. So I want you to ignore everything on here with the exception of these up and down lines. Okay. And let's just talk about what we're looking at when we're doing this. So what this is, is we're starting here at normal exhalation and we're breathing in and out, in and out, normal breath in, normal breath out, normal breath in, normal breath out, normal breath in, normal breath out, breathing in as much as you possibly can, blowing out as much as you possibly can, coming back up, breathing in and out, in and out. Okay, so this is just normal respiration and anything moving up is inspiration and anything moving down is expiration. All right, so now that we have that established, let's get the volumes figured out. So a volume is just one volume, but there are four volumes, four different volumes on this box. All right, so we're gonna start with the easiest first. We're gonna start with that tidal volume. That was the normal breath in and the normal breath out. So what you see going on right here between these two dotted lines, that's tidal volume. So just kind of follow these dotted lines over. Keep following, keep following. See how it says tidal volumes right here? Because it's between those two dotted lines. And keep following it over because I have a green box for tidal volume. So we're going to label this as tidal volume. Okay. All right. So that's one volume. Now let's do another volume. All right. If we do this and here's what I want you to think, I want you to breathe normal, normal in, normal out, normal in. Okay. At the top of a normal breath in, I want you to breathe in as much as you can. Okay, so what you did was from the top of a normal tidal volume, a normal inspiration, you breathed in as much as you possibly could. All right, so this was the inspiratory reserve volume. So inspiratory reserve volume is from the top of a normal inhalation till you can't breathe in anymore. And if you follow this across, We've got a green box for this also. So this is inspiratory reserve volume. Okay. All right. Well, if you have an inspiratory reserve volume, you got an expiratory reserve volume. Okay. So let's talk about that one. So here we go. Breathing in and out, in and out. So out of, after a normal exhalation, see right here from a normal exhalation, if you blow everything you can out of the chest, that's your expiratory reserve volume. So expiratory reserve is from the end of a normal exhalation and then you push everything out you can. Okay, so that between these two dotted lines over, 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 I've got a box for that also. This is expiratory reserve volume. And then the volume of gas that remains in the chest that you will never be able to blow out, like after that normal, that, that hard push that you blew everything out, there's still a little bit of air that's left in your alveoli and it will never come out no matter how hard you push and strain. That is called the residual volume. And so there's a little square for this also. All right. So does that make sense? So we've got IRV, VT, ERV, and RV. So these are our normal volumes. All right. So now let's talk about capacities. Okay. A capacity 
is two or more volumes. All right, so you're gonna at least add two volumes. Maybe you're adding three volumes, maybe you're adding four volumes, okay? But a capacity is two or more volumes added together. All right, so let me just get rid of the green marks just so we're not confused with too much stuff. Okay, and now we'll put on the blue pen. All right, so let's take this normal tidal breathing in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, normal breath in, normal breath out. All right, so from the bottom, okay, from the bottom of tidal volume or at the end of a normal exhalation, if we have our patient breathe in as much as they possibly can, okay, and we follow that across to this blue box right there, that is called your inspiratory capacity. All right, so from a normal exhalation to breathing in as much as you can, that's called inspiratory capacity, okay? So from, from this bottom of a normal exhalation, okay, we can also breathe as much as we can out, and we said that was expiratory reserve volume, but if we add the expiratory reserve volume and the residual volume, those two things together, see that blue box there? That's called your functional residual capacity, okay? So if you look, I said a capacity was two or more volumes. So your inspiratory capacity is your inspiratory reserve volume and your tidal volume. Your functional residual capacity is your expiratory reserve volume and your residual volume. So two volumes added together. Well, now we have even a bigger capacity. So let me get rid of our blue so we're not confused. Okay, and let's put the yellow one on. All right, so let's breathe again, tidal volume in, out, normal in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. Let's breathe all the way in as much as it possibly can and then blow it all the way out until you can't blow out anymore. So from here, blown out all the way here, all right? Do you see that capacity? That's called your vital capacity. And let's carry it over to that yellow box. This is called vital capacity. Now vital capacity, you can inhale and blow it all the way out or from blowing absolutely everything out of your chest and inhaling, that's also vital capacity. So vital capacity is going from as much as you can take in to blowing as much as you can blow out or blowing as much as you can blow out and then inhaling as much as you can. But that whole thing is vital capacity. And if you look at this, remember a capacity, two or more volumes added together, vital capacity is a combination of IRV, VT, and ERV. So when you exhale your vital capacity, all that's left in this chest is residual volume. Okay, and then the last one, let's get rid of the yellow so it's not confusing. If you think about this, if we summed up every one of these volumes from residual volume all the way up till we can't breathe in anything more, that is that red box over there, that's total lung capacity, okay? Again, a capacity is two or more volumes. Well, total lung capacity is all the volumes, IRV, tidal volume, ERV, and RV added together. All the air that can be in the chest is total lung capacity. All right, so another thing that you're gonna wanna do is memorize normal values, okay? Average values. Now. My normal value and your normal value are gonna be very different and it depends on the age of a person, the height of a person, the gender, and in some cases, ethnicity. It kind of changes what our predicted normals are. But we have a society, um, an average in society, okay? So the average tidal volume is about 500 milliliters. So all of these values I'm about to give you are in milliliters. 
IRV is 3,100 milliliters. ERV is 1,200 milliliters. And RV is 1,200 milliliters. Okay, now here's a trick. Those of you that have been exposed to this, you, you, you know what this is, what we're talking about. Those of you that haven't been exposed to this before, I'm gonna give you a trick that makes this really easier. I don't memorize the normals of all of it. I only memorize the normals of the four volumes. And here's how I tell myself to remember them. So I know it's 3,100, 500, 1,200, 1,200, all in milliliters. To shorten that in my mind, I say to myself, 31, 5, 12, 12. 31, 5, 12, 12. All right, these are my normal values. Well, then when I go to capacities, I know a capacity is two or more volumes. So if inspiratory capacity is the combination between IRV and VT, I'm not gonna memorize that normal because I can add those two together and know that that is 3,600 mLs, okay? Same thing with FRC. I'm not gonna memorize its normal value because I know it is a combination of ERV and RV and 1,200 and 1,200 is 2,400 mLs. Same thing with vital capacity. I'm not gonna memorize its normals. I know it's a combination of IRV, VT, and ERV. 31, 5, and 12, which is 4,800. And when I think about TLC, that's a combination of all of these together. And when I add all of these together, that's 6,000 mLs. Okay? So now your references that you're using in school, the textbooks that you're using or what your instructors are telling you for normal values may differ slightly from this because different references are a tad bit different. Don't let that confuse you. Go with what your instructor tells you, but this is basically what we teach in our program. But just wanted to make sure that you got the divisions of this box and it makes sense. Hope it's helped. See you soon.